<clears throat> We're going to do a lesson here about rationalizing the denominator. <clears throat> this is for page 1127, pages 13 through 15. <clears throat> so um, I always tell my students this, that mathematicians are very smart people. And um, in order to make things kind of work and everybody be doing the same thing, they've come up with some rules that the rest of us have to follow. And one of their rules of algebra is that you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator of a fraction. For whatever reason, I don't understand why, <clears throat> but to them, simplifying it means you can have a number <clears throat> in the denominator, but not a radical. So we have to go through a process called rationalizing the denominator, which means turning this irrational denominator, which is a radical, into a rational number. Now, it really isn't that hard to do, but it's just a little bit of gymnastics. So let's take this one first because it's real simple. <clears throat> I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 7. So you see <clears throat> I have the numerator and the denominator are the same thing. And anything divided by itself is 1. So again, we're back to we're not changing the value. We're just changing the format of this number. So here, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, the 7 pops out. Da, 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 da. And now I can simplify the top and I get the square root of 21, and I really can't do anything further with that. So this is rationalized, and sometimes the directions will say simplify the fraction. And this is actually simpler, okay? According to mathematicians, that's simpler. <clears throat> now, let's take something like this, the square root of 27. Now, we could multiply by the square root of 27 top and bottom, okay? And we would eventually get to the right answer as we reduce it. But if we can deal with this and say, okay, this is a square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, so a 3 pops out. You see that? And then we're left with square root of 3, and then on the top we have 5. So I'm going to leave the 5. Down here, I simplified it by getting the 3 out, leave the square root of 3. Now we have to rationalize it by multiplying top and bottom by just the square root of 3. Not the whole thing, just the radical part. All right, so I'm going to do the square root of 3 down here, square root of 3 up here. And then that makes that pop out, which gives me 9 in the denominator, 3 times 3. And then the numerator just becomes 5 square root of 3. <clears throat> and we're done. Okay? Not too hard. Let's take one of these. I think this is one like you have in your homework. So I'm not going to take you all the way. I'll let you finish it. But notice we have two radicals in the denominator. So I don't know if you remember back to, oh, let's say a minus b times a plus b. And do you remember that when you do the FOIL method and you get a squared, and then the middle term is negative ab and positive ab, which cancels out, and then you're left with b squared, okay? So by multiplying by the, we, technically it's called the conjugate. So if this is minus, we multiply by the plus, but leave these two terms the same. We can turn this into just x and y and have the middle term disappear, okay? And get rid of all of the radicals in the process. So up here, I'm gonna, or down here first, I'm gonna do the square root of x plus the square root of y. Do the same thing up here square root of x plus the square root of y, okay? Should put parentheses around this. <clears throat> Let's look at what happens with the bottom here first. So the square root of x times the square root of x, the x pops out. This would be the square root of xy with the negative and then positive square root of xy. So those two are going to cancel out. Minus square root of y times square root of y, so the y pops out. Now, I'm going to let you do the top here. So you're going to do the FOIL method. You do the first times the first, and then you do the outer. Now that stays under the radical, square root of xy. And then we have another one for the inner. So another square root of xy, nothing pops out. 
and then your last term will be the square root of y times the square root of y. So then you'll see that the y should pop out. All right, so that, and there's nothing more you can simplify, okay? Because the uh, you're, they're all being added or subtracted, so they're, I call them protected quantities. <clears throat> But we have rationalized the denominator by getting rid of any radicals in that denominator. Okay, they don't give you too many problems. So you have like maybe 10 problems for this whole lesson. And I don't think you'll find it to be too hard. As soon as you finish, make sure you score right away. And if you got any wrong, look at the score key to see the steps they went through. And then uh, go back and correct your work <clears throat> and make sure you understand what you're doing before we move on.